Barakadah Yahweh, Barakadah Yahweh Shai. In Hebrew, that's bless the Father, bless the Son. So let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash. That's Yahweh, be the true name of the Heavenly Father in Hebrew, Yahweh Shai, being the true name of our Lord and Savior, and Rakakadash, being the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing us this truth. Honors to the brothers that spread in this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. Shalom to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people who are the true Israelites, who's returning back to the Lord during these last days so that he will have mercy on them in this time of judgment, while the remaining two thirds of our people be destroyed in judgment for not seeking the Lord during the last days. So we back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. In this lesson here, as someone in the family asked me the significance of the white stone in Revelation 2 and 17. And I had this broken down to me a little bit before, but I went and did some research. Um, and we gonna start off with that scripture. Revelation 2 and 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is safe unto the churches, to him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So the question was, what was the significance of this white stone with the new name written in it? But before we can answer this, we got to do a little research on stones in the Bible, on stones and what they represent. And one thing about the Bible, the Bible solves its own riddles. It solves its own mysteries. We just got to read it. And this is what the pastors don't do. So we're going to start off with 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone. Key word is stone. We're about to see this a lot. So again, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of Yahweh and precious. So let's break it down. To whom coming, who is coming, who's returning back to the earth, will be our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. So to whom coming, which is Yahweh Shai, as unto a living stone. So this is compared our Lord and Savior to a living stone. We know stones can't be alive. They're objects. So these living stones are people. And this stone who is coming, who is not here in the earth yet, but is coming is Yahweh Shai. Disallowed indeed of men. This is a clue that shows that this is our Lord and Savior. Disallowed indeed of men means he was rejected by men. He was rejected by his own people when he came in the flesh. The same people that rejected him back then are the same people that's rejecting this truth now when we try to push it on them. But although he was rejected of men, he was chosen of Yahweh, his father, and precious. Verse 5, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh by Yahweh Shai of Mashiach. So we know to whom coming as unto a living stone is our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. But when we go down, it says, Ye also, so you also as lively stones. This will be talking about talking about the believers during the last days which will be the elect, the one-third of our people who's going to receive salvation. They are the lively stones. So the stones are people. Each stone is a body. So each stone is a believer. And each of these stones, each of the believers, make up this spiritual house. So this is a spiritual house, not a physical house. This is not a house that's made out of stone. This is the people that occupy that house and the people that occupy that house the spiritual house will be the one-third the elect the true believers in Yahweh Shai 
So yeah, each believer represents a brick that's used to build up the spiritual house. So let's continue. Wherefore also is contained in the scripture. Again, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. So this is telling you that this is also written in the scripture what we're about to read. And what we're about to read is actually written in the Old Testament. So people saying the Old Testament was done away with is is void, it's invalid, completely false. The New Testament spent a great deal of time reciting, repeating, and referencing the Old Testament. So again, wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures, more specifically in the Old Testament. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So we know we have lively stones, which would be the believers, the elect, who's going to receive salvation. But if we go back up in verse 4, it says, To whom coming as into a living stone. Singular represents Yahweh Shai. He's that chief cornerstone who is to come, which is our Lord and Savior. Key word, he that believeth on him, who believeth on the chief cornerstone. And the Lord said, I will lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. The Lord will lay this chief cornerstone as you will lay a brick, as we can see over here to the right. But this is not talking about laying a literal brick or a literal stone. This is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, coming to the earth in the fleshly body, in human form. That's what it means when it says, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. That was Yahweh Shai being born in the earth. That was the chief cornerstone being laid. But now that we know that the chief cornerstone is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, let's jump to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahweh Shai, himself being the chief cornerstone so when you build a house you must first lay a foundation and this spiritual house which would be those lively stones which represents the elect the one third of our people that's going to receive salvation the elect they make up the spiritual house but as we can see here that spiritual house has a foundation and this is not a physical foundation this is a spiritual foundation, meaning this foundation is actually people, which would be servants of the Lord. That's why it reads, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. The ancient apostles and the ancient prophets are this spiritual foundation for this spiritual house. They are the foundation because the apostles and the prophets came before us. And us being that spiritual house, this spiritual house will be built on that spiritual foundation. Because this ministry that we do, believing on Yahweh Shai to be saved, the blueprint was done by the prophets and the apostles who they learned from Yahweh Shai, which would be our Lord and Savior. So this foundation is the blueprint for this house to be built on. So again, a spiritual foundation for a spiritual house, not a physical house. In a little backstory, we built the Lord a temple twice during the ancient days, and it was destroyed both times. The last people to destroy it was the Romans, who are Edomites, who are called white people today. Although the, the physical temple was destroyed, the Lord is raising a spiritual temple. And we the believers, the one-third, the elect, we are that spiritual temple. And again, the apostles and the prophets, they're that spiritual foundation. You have to lay the foundation, and then you start laying the stones, laying the bricks to build that house. And what we're doing during these last days, we are gathering these stones for this spiritual temple. When we teach, do lessons, go out amongst the people. And again, the apostles and the prophets, they laid the blueprint 
for this ministry that we're doing today. So they are the spiritual foundation. And also, all the apostles and ancient prophets are back here in the earth today through regeneration, what the world calls reincarnation. So the prophets are back to reestablish that foundation, to make sure it's red, to make sure that that foundation is built so that we can gather the believers, gather the lively stones, gather the other bricks, which will be the people to build this spiritual house of the Lord. And the spiritual house of the Lord would be the believers in it, the one third the elect. And it says Yahweh Shai himself being the chief cornerstone. For example, before you build a house, you got to build a foundation. So the one third the elect, they're the spiritual house, the apostles and the prophets that are back today, they're the spiritual foundation. But even before the foundation, you have to lay that first stone. And that's Yahweh Shai himself being the chief cornerstone. In the scriptures, chief equals first. So Yahweh Shai is that very first stone that was laid for the spiritual house that the foundation could be built off of. That's why when we go back to 1 Peter 2 and 6, it says, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. This is the first stone that the foundation would be built off of. Yahweh Shai is the first stone that the apostles and the prophets will build the foundation upon, being the blueprint that we follow today. So Yahweh Shai being that first stone means he's the first chosen of the Lord. He's the blueprint. Everything is built off his back, and he's the perfect example who we should follow after to be part of this spiritual house because can't just anybody be part of this spiritual house there's um rules and regulations and yahweh shai is the example he's the chief cornerstone like when you build a house you don't just get any old kind of brick and stones you got to inspect it to make sure that it's fit to build up that house and that's what we do through the scriptures we go out amongst our people and make sure they're fit to occupy the spiritual house that's being built, which is the believers that's being gathered during these last days. And if you don't fit the description of these lively stones to make up this spiritual house, we're going to decide that with the scriptures. That means you won't get it. And if we continue, in whom all the building fitly framed together, grow up unto an holy temple and the Lord, so again, in whom, and who is this whom? That's the chief cornerstone to begin with, Yahweh Shai. Then it would be the foundation, the apostles and the prophets. Then it would be the spiritual house, which would be the one third of the true believers. Those are the whom are the building fitly framed together. Grow up unto a holy temple into the Lord. So as we are gathering the true believers, during these last days, that's the building of the temple being fitly framed together. Each believer that's being gathered, that's one brick or one stone being laid for the spiritual house of the Lord, the spiritual temple. Then the more believers we get in, we start to see the temple, the spiritual house being completed. This is a holy temple unto the Lord, not a physical, but a spiritual through the people, through the true believers. That's why afterwards it reads, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of Yahweh through the Spirit. So the Lord is not going to habitate or dwell in actual physical bricks, but he will dwell in his true believers through the Spirit. So the Lord can enter the temple by entering us through the Spirit. And that's why when we go back to Peter, when we read all this stuff, this is not an actual house. Because remember, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. This spiritual house is the believers who has the spirit of the Lord resting in them. Now, now that we know what these lively stones are, which will be the believers who make up that spiritual house, we know who the foundation is, which is the apostles and the prophets. 
we know who the chief cornerstone is, which is that very first stone that this house is built off of. That's our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. So let's revisit Revelation 2 and 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in a stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth. So the key word here is overcometh. So this is talking about the elect, the one third of our people who are the true believers in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Those will be the one that overcome. And those that overcome will be given a white stone. And in the stone, a new name written. So this is that word stone again. Now that we did a little history on these stones in the Bible, the stones being the believers, which make up this spiritual house of the Lord. Now we see that this is a white stone. So the significance of this white stone is, if you look over here to the right, regular stones are usually dirty. They got mud on them, dust, dirt. But this white stone means we have been cleansed. And this white stone it's not literally white. White means purified. We've been purified and cleansed through the word and through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. And white means pure and stone. Remember, each stone is a body. Each stone represents one of the Lord's true believers. So white stone means pure body. This would be the spiritual bodies that's going to be given to the elect once they overcome us. In the stone, a new name written. So this is actually those who overcome us. This is the elect being rewarded, being rewarded with a pure body, a spiritual body. And in that new body will be given a new name, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth. Let's go to Revelation 1 and 5. We're going to show why this stone being white represents the bricks of the temple being cleansed. Right now in the flesh, we are dirty stones that build up the spiritual house. But by the blood of Yahweh Shai, we've been cleansed. That's why Revelation 1 and 5 reads, And from Yahweh Shai, who is the faithful witness and the chief cornerstone, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us, from our sins in his own blood. So this white stone represents us being washed of our sins, of our filthiness. And with that, that's that new body. So now we can continue reading this conversation that Yahweh was having in the next chapter, which will be Revelation 3 and 5. Key word, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. To go this word white again. Because remember, just a minute ago, to whom that overcometh, I will give from a white stone. This is that spiritual body. But once you get that spiritual body, you're going to be clothed in white raiment. And white raiment is clothes. That's why we see clothed right before it. The Lord is going to give us a spiritual body, a pure body, that white stone, and in that spiritual body, a new name. So the Lord has pretty much given us a new identity. So we get that new body, that new name. Then we're going to be clothed in new clothing and white raiment. Pretty much wearing the white garments like the holy angels wear. We're going to wear what the angels wear. I will not blot out his name out the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So the first part of this Scripture talks about him that overcometh, being given a white stone, a pure body, and given a new name. And conversation here starts off the same way. He that overcometh will be clothed in white linen, pretty much. But after, it starts talking about the name. That's why it says, and in the stone, a new name written. So those who get the body gets a new name. And that new name is the same name that Yahweh Shai will confess to his father. That's why it says, but I will confess his name before my father. That name that's going to be confessed before Yahweh 
is that new name written in this white stone, which would be the name that's given to your new body. That's going to be the name that's confessed to the Heavenly Father. Jerome, Corey, and Chris ain't going to be written in the book of life. Now the Lord is going to rename us and give us a name according to his will. These white slave owner names we got ain't going to be written in the book of life. Not only that, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, and the holy angels, they don't even speak English. They speak Hebrew. So we're going to be given Hebrew names. And those Hebrew names that will be given to those who get the spiritual body, those new Hebrew names are the names that will be confessed before the Father and his angels. All right, so a summary, this white stone represents a spiritual body. This represents the stones of the spiritual temple being cleansed of their sins. The stone represents the body and that body being white, meaning it's being cleansed. So those who overcome it is going to get a spiritual body. And with that spiritual body, you're going to get a new name. After you get your new body and your new name, you're going to be clothed in the same garments that the holy angels wear. And then that new name that you get with your new body will be the name that's confessed to the Heavenly Father. And that name that's given to you will be your new Hebrew name that will be written in the book of life. So this white stone represents those that overcome. It's pretty much the elect being rewarded with eternal life. So that's it for this lesson here. Until next time, Shalom.